Try it again. Hey, there we go. All right. So I am Nicole Cow, and I'm an English and communication coach. I help second language English speakers become effective English communicators. I specialize in spoken English. My focus is on helping adult professionals successfully communicate at work. Some of the things I help with are presentation skills, conversational skills, developing fluency and vocabulary, and improving pronunciation. I've been teaching for 20 years, and I'm also an avid language learner, so I know what it takes to speak another language effectively. And one of the biggest highlights of my career was the two years I spent training English teachers in China. And for all, you's, uh, for all of you here that are from China, I was teaching in uh, Liningang, which is in Jiangsu province. So I don't know if we have anybody out there, but we can chat about that a little bit later. And now I'll turn it over to Michelle. Great, thank you. Uh, before I do my 30 seconds introduction, I want to just explain why we are doing this. Uh, because for today's session, we're talking about effective English communication, and we want to demonstrate how we do 30 seconds introduction. And uh, we will also teach you how you can do it. Mm, this is uh, just one demonstration of what we're doing, and uh, we will show you the steps, and we will also show you when we are talking to different people, we have different uh, kind of 30 seconds introduction we use. So for the purpose for this audience, and we um, made the introduction really tailored to our audience. And here is my 30 seconds introduction. And we purposely um, put it on a slide so people can see it. In this way, you get a sense of how Nico and I trying to speak directly to our audience. Oh, okay, here's mine, and there you go. I'm Michelle Zhou. I'm a career and a leadership coach helping people fulfill their potential. I'm also the founder of Pacific Technologies Consulting Group. We help companies grow US-China cross-border businesses. I'm certified in multiple coaching, cross-cultural communication, and leadership training programs. In addition, I've worked for 20 years in the technology industry in both US and China, including Microsoft, and I was a people manager before. I use my expertise and experience to help people plan and advance career, become better leaders, and grow businesses. I've coached and trained hundreds of managers and employees at Microsoft, and founders or executives for startup companies. A recent highlight for me is I helped co-founded the China chapter for the Microsoft Alumni Network. And here I put a picture on the left side. Um, that's the picture for December when we launched this China chapter for the Microsoft Alumni Network. All right, so that's a very quick demonstration Nico and I prepared for this. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Michelle. All right. So in this presentation, I'm going to be focusing on the language and communication aspect of these different topics. We're going to cover four different topics within our presentation today. Hold, the, um, hold on, I have all the image over my slides. <laughs> First, we're going to talk about interacting socially with others in meetings before the business begins. So basically, using small talk to get to know people. Second, we're going to talk about how to introduce yourself in an effective way and create a great first impression. After these first two modules here, we're going to stop and we're going to break you out into small groups so that you can practice the skills we've just taught you. After that, we'll you'll learn how to politely speak up and interrupt if needed and share your ideas during a meeting. And finally, how to express differing opinions in a neutral and non-threatening way. Now, before we get started, you want to make sure that you'll have a pen and paper because Michelle is going to go through with you an exercise on how to develop an effective introduction. And we want you to be taking some notes and actually write that down. So please make sure that you have pen and paper ready before we get to that activity. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. On okay. 
So I will take it over from here. Um, the, you know, when Nicole and I prepare this uh, presentation, uh, we really put our heads together and think about, okay, what are some things uh, people really uh, struggle about? And people are, you know, in their virtual meetings, um, they need some help so that their meetings can be more effectively. So uh, since I coach a lot of people, I, as I mentioned, I coached a couple of hundred of managers and employees um, in Microsoft and also in some other companies. Uh, I have personally talking to people who are in many different kinds of situations and they told me their stories and they uh, come to me for help. So for, from my side, uh, here in this uh, workshop, I would I will provide some of those scenarios that I heard from my clients, my coaches, and I will share with you. Uh, okay, this is the kind of situation they met and they are struggling. And um, of course, uh, I as a coach, I help them to help, you know come up with some solutions or help them to gain their uh, skills and confidence to become better become more effective in communication uh, the other thing is well nico uh, she is very specialized in english and communication and she is also specialized in the american culture so when we work together i can provide you know from the eastern side this is how people think and this is how um, the situation uh, was running in people's mind because I heard all these stories. And I tap in with um, Nico's American background, say, well, um, let's uh, also come up with how Americans react when this kind of situation happens. So this is how we work together on this. Uh, a lot of times then uh, in our, through our workshop, Nicole will provide the perspectives from American side, as well as, well, this is how in the US, how we do things or how we say things. So that's some background for you on uh, how we work together on this one. Uh, the other thing I also want to mention is, um, Nico, you know, actually is my English coach. Um, I asked her uh, to help me to uh, improve my pronunciation and the way how I speak English, the, you know, the intonation. Um, sometimes uh, the, I have mispronounced the words or sometimes when I uh, express myself, um, maybe Americans have, uh-huh. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> so I think there's some issues uh, as a the person who whose English is not the first language, uh, and I believe many of you are struggling with that as well. Okay, uh, with that, then let me jump into the first uh, scenario, which is interact socially with others uh, in meetings like today, right? We're what we are talking about all today is um, really focused on in virtual meetings, no matter you turn on your camera or not. Yeah. Uh, before, Nico, go back. <laughs> okay, Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, in our meetings, um, what I found is uh, a lot of people I coached, they come to me, they said, well, Michelle, um, I, you know, in, in these type of uh, virtual meetings, it's so awkward for people to do those uh, social uh, chat or the chit chat or uh, small talks. And uh, what I found a lot of engineers, uh, people, or some people who do not uh, like to social with others, they found it especially hard in such kind of a situation uh, for social talking, uh, social interaction. So if they come to the meeting, if somehow the meeting starts with a little bit of chit chat, people ask, how are you, or things like that, then um, you know, my engineer friends usually just say, well, I'm fine, uh, and you? That's from our textbooks when we learn English. That's the first thing we, we learned, right? How are you? Fine. Uh, thank you, and you? <laughs> uh, so the conversation, they feel is awkward. And many of them said, well, you know, I usually just go there right on time. So, and I try to mute, just come in, mute myself, avoid all this social talk. And then when we start to talk about work, uh, that's where I start to talk. So that's a, a very common situation. Now, um, 
Well, not everybody is doing that. I have also seen people who are very successful in this type of a social uh, interaction, even in virtual meetings. Uh, why do they do that? Well, let's go to the next slide. Well, they use this kind of uh, um, situation to build a relationship with others. Uh, it's very useful um, for people to get to know you and you also get to know them uh, beyond their title, beyond just work. Um, I have seen people uh, doing really well when they do this type of uh, meetings. They are really showing up as if they are a leader <laughs> or uh, it, they leave people an impression that they have a pretty strong leadership because they come into the meeting, uh, they come in a little bit early and they greet everybody when people come in. They say hi, they start some sort of social interaction, you know, small talks, and they make people feel very comfortable, feel very friendly, uh, welcomed, very warm. So they really create this kind of atmosphere to start this meeting. That really um, help them position themselves. Later we will talk about the brand, right? Uh, they will position themselves in a way that they are the ones that are uh, driving things. They are the ones that are taking initiatives. They're the ones are people person. They're the ones cares about others. And they're the ones that are leaders. So if you uh, feel comfortable if your personality is, you know, a little bit more open than just to, you know, be the ones that I shut my mouth <laughs> most of the time, then I would encourage you uh, try to use this type of opportunities and learn a little bit of skills and start to um, be a little bit more of yourself and be uh, open and uh, talk to people, uh, you know, the beautiful relationship uh, in those uh, social uh, interaction time before you really start the business. And that helps you build your network, helps you build a trust, and people want to work with you. So I've covered this slide, and uh, let's go to the next slide. We look at how do you to do it, right? Uh, Nico is an expert in this. So okay. Nico, take away. <laughs> I will. Okay. So before I talk about what to talk about, I want to talk about some topics to avoid. So basically we want to avoid anything that is unpleasant and negative. So anything that makes people feel bad or might create an argument, we want to avoid those topics. So one is politics. I know it's tempting to share your opinion on the current president, the former president, the next election, things that are going wrong in the world. It's really tempting to share your opinion, but in business situations, you probably should not. Even if other people bring up the subject of the election, the president, the whatever, I would kind of steer the the conversation to another topic if possible, because it's very likely that that will generate negative feelings, people will start arguing, and then you could very easily lose business, make enemies, and that's not something we wanna do. So um, try to avoid politics. Avoid talking about religion also. Uh, usually everybody thinks their religion is the right and correct one, and so there are many, many different religions out there. So it's best to just avoid that topic altogether both in business and even in social situations. We generally don't talk much about religion. If you're truly curious about different religions, I would encourage you to search online, read some books, maybe even visit some churches, temples, mosques to, to get familiar with that. But it's not a topic that really goes over well usually, so best avoid it. Um, I added this in here specifically based on my experience in China. Um, usually Americans are very uncomfortable talking about, well, their age, especially women will never ever tell you their age. So don't ask. <laughs> um, we, we don't even often ask our friends this question. Uh, it's a very, very touchy subject. Age, 
we kind of value youth a lot in the American culture. And so sometimes being seen as older can actually be a negative thing. Um, I skipped over the first one. Let me go back to that in a moment. Salary, never ever ask anybody what their salary is. We don't even talk about that with our close family and friends. So never, never, never ask about salary. And cost of things is also kind of to be avoided a little bit because it kind of is a reflection of your salary and such. And we, we kind of like to keep things on equal terms that we're all about the same and nobody's really higher or better than anybody. Marital status is not really a taboo, but when you don't know somebody well, you don't want the first question to be, hey, are you married? Because that means to me that you would like to date me. You want me to be your girlfriend. And in a business situation, that's not really appropriate. We're doing business together. We're coworkers. Um, whether I'm married or single should not be important to you. But the information will come out very soon. As you get to know the person better, you will certainly find out whether they're married, single, they have a partner, they have kids, they'll start talking about their family and things that are important to them as you get to know them a little bit better. All right, so now that you know what to avoid, let's talk about what you should actually discuss. So, in this presentation that we're doing today, we have different kinds of people here. We have people who will be strangers. Like when we set you up in breakout groups, you very well may be talking to people you've never met before. And so I'm gonna talk about what to discuss with strangers. But it's also quite possible that you may be in a breakout room with people that you have met previously and that you haven't seen them in a while. So we'll talk about kind of how to catch up with former coworkers and people that you have met before. And then also I'm going to talk a little bit about what to say to your actual colleagues, people that you do work with on a day-to-day -day basis. So first, what to talk about with strangers. So we're gonna to try to find things that we have in common with people so that we can extend the conversation, we can get to know people better, we can build a rapport and a relationship, maybe make new friends, and kind of open new doors to opportunities. So we want to actually get people talking and see how we can connect with them. So one way to do that is talking about obvious big events that are happening. And most of you are probably in the Seattle area, so we would likely be talking about festivals that are happening, holidays, sporting events, major things that most people know that are happening. We could talk about this particular workshop that we're attending together. It's something we have in common. The obvious big event that's kind of happening in the world right now is the coronavirus. Now we want to try to keep things as positive as possible, so we don't really want to dwell on things that are negative and that may cause people to be sad or angry or anxious. So the best advice is to kind of avoid that topic mostly, but at the same time, I'm noticing when I'm in meetings with people, kind of the first topic is like, how are you doing? Are you okay? I mean, everybody's at home. We're, we're in a difficult situation now. And so kind of keeping it human and, and really reaching out and saying, you know, how are you? That is kind of, I think our, number one topic at the moment. Not dwelling on disease and problems, but just kind of making sure that people are okay and that if they need to share their feelings that they, they find they can do that. So I would encourage you to just check in with people and kind of ask how they are. And not a, hey, how are you? But more of a, you know, how are you really doing? I mean, you're working at home. Are you doing okay? How do you feel? Because um, sometimes just having someone to talk to for a moment kind of, you know, maybe brightens people's day that way. Okay, if you're really uncomfortable with the topic though, avoid it. It's easy to talk about things, other things like, where are you located? Like we're all on this call tonight and it's possible we could be in different cities, different states, even different countries. So if you don't know the people that are in the conference with you, hey, where are you? Where are you located? And that might just be the neighborhood in Seattle you're in. Like, oh, hey, where do you live? Oh, you know, I live in Capitol Hill. Hey, me too, you know? And so you find something in common, maybe your neighbors. So you say, hey, where are you located? And, and actually, I may be the farthest one away today. I'm not sure. I'm actually in Eastern Washington. 
in a small town called Chuila, <laughs> which I'm temporarily visiting. I'm, I'm visiting my dad right now. So I'm usually in the Seattle area. So anyhow, more about where you're located. You might ask people about their city. If they say, hey, I'm in Chicago. He's like, oh, hey, I haven't been to Chicago. What's it like there? So use the main questions to kind of um, get a little bit more information, find out some more. Um, tell me more about that city, that country. Where are you? You're, oh, you're in New York? Oh, how do you like that? How long have you lived there? And a big one for people in Seattle, Seattle seems to be home for a lot of people who are coming in, coming and going and coming and going. There's always new people there. So I frequently meet people who have not been in Seattle long. They'll say, I've only been here four months, or I've been here a year and a half, or maybe three years. And like, oh, that brings up the topic of what brought you to Seattle? Why are you living here? So usually they'll talk about their job, or they'll talk about they got married and their wife is from here. Um, they'll talk about a variety of things that you could maybe connect with. And, and it's pretty often that we ask, also ask them, how do you like it here? Have you been able to adjust to all the rain, to the darkness? You know, how are things going? Okay. Next, if we meet somebody who has an accent, we naturally are curious and we want to know where you're from. So we're like, hey, where are you from? And you say, oh, I'm from China. I'm like, really? Oh, man, you know, um, I lived in China for two years. Where are you from? And so again, we're looking for somewhere where we can kind of connect and kind of make friends on you know, our shared connections. What do you do for a living? Okay, so if you attend a social event where you're meeting new people, invariably like the second question you'll get is, what do you do? And that is, what's your work? What, what keep, kind of keeps you busy? Uh, Americans are kind of obsessed with what we do for a living, it's kind of, one of our main identities. So what you do for work, where you work is kind of a main topic for us. So that, that one's always kind of a safe bet for meeting new people. And finally, if you can't think of anything else to say, talk about the weather. Uh, talk about the weather with strangers, with colleagues, with everybody. If you're waiting for the bus and there's somebody next to you, you can talk about the weather. If you're standing in line at the grocery store, and the cashier is ringing up your groceries, you can talk about the weather, especially when there's a change. You say, oh my gosh, it's been so rainy. I'm really looking forward to some sun. I hope this weekend will be sunny and we can finally go out. Um, like, oh my gosh, it's been so cold. I can't stand it. You know, you'll hear people always, 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 always going on and on about the weather. So that's always a safe topic, All right? So what to talk about with your colleagues. So if you're maybe in a small meeting and there's maybe three, four or five of you in a, in a meeting face to face here, the conversation is gonna be a little bit different. These are people that you know, at least you know their name, you probably know a little bit about them. Even if you don't talk a lot in your workplace, you probably at least know something basic about them. So good things to talk about here are what are you working on? You know, what's your current project? How's it going? Work stuff. And similarly, new developments in your company. Let's say, for example, that you worked at Amazon. You might say, oh my gosh, did you hear? We, we're hiring 100,000 new employees. Is that amazing? You might just talk about like what's going on. Did you hear the new headquarters is now located in, you know, whatever city? So, Talking about work is always an easy thing to do. Again, the weather, we just talked about that. Huge one is the weekend. Now, if it's Monday, the most common thing to say you're with your coworkers when you just arrive is, hey, how was your weekend? Or did you do any fun? Do anything fun this weekend? And I'd say, um, no, not much. I just kind of relaxed and you know watched a few movies. And you want to make sure that you return the question to the other person. You say, well, how about you? Do you do anything fun this weekend? And you say, oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? I uh, got together with my parents. We, we had brunch. We went for a walk. You know, so chat, 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 chat. And today being Friday, we're likely to talk about this weekend. So 
do you have any plans for the weekend? Are you going to do anything fun? So, and this is a great way to open a conversation about someone's hobbies and interests. Because if that person tells you that uh, they're going to go sailing this weekend, you say, oh, you're a sailor? Hey, me too. You know what? I used to race in college and I raced on this boat. And so it can really start opening the conversation to make a better connection when you start learning about their hobbies and interests. Okay. Upcoming holiday and summer travel plans are great topics too. Uh, this is currently a holiday weekend. It's Memorial Day weekend. Ordinarily, people would be traveling, lots of people would be traveling. Since this is the unofficial beginning of summer, people would be going camping, going to beaches and lakes, and having picnics and barbecues, and maybe going out of town. Uh, this year, I don't know. I think people are probably not traveling much at all, but maybe staying home, maybe still visiting parks and, and beaches and things. But it's always a question to ask him. Do you have any plans for this weekend? Are you gonna do anything fun? All right. Oh, what's new with their family? Assuming that you know somebody well, you probably are already aware that they have a family, they have a couple kids. So you might ask about um, what's new with the kids, their sporting activities, their clubs, their events, and that sort of thing. Okay, and finally, what about your former colleagues and people that you know, but you haven't really seen recently? You're gonna say something like, to borrow from the Chinese, long time no see. How have you been? You'll notice that big emotion on that, how have you been? That's really like, oh my God, I'm so happy to see you. Tell me what's new. That's all how have you been means. Just tell me what's new. And some people say, oh, not much. Everything's really kind of the same, or they might have a lot to talk about. Um, if they left your workplace and are now in a new place, you might ask how their new job is going, where they're working, what they're doing. If you left the workplace and they still work there, you probably want to find out what's happening at your old workplace. What's new at whatever your workplace is. And they'll tell you uh, new people that are hired, maybe people who have left, who's been promoted, you know, everything that's going on. And again, always talking about their family because people love to take, talk about their kids, their grandkids. That's always a great topic for people that you know that they have kids and grandkids and they enjoy talking about them. That's a great way to get people to talk for a while. All right. And we are on to our next, our second topic. And I'll turn right. it over to Michelle. Hmm. Okay, thanks, Nico. Um, that's a lot of information. I know, that did go on for a while. Uh, Hopefully by the way, it wasn't we are, overwhelming. Yeah, <laughs> we prepared a handout and we're going to send it out to people um, after, you know, after we uh, have a way to connect you. Uh, by the end of this session, we will have a uh, QR code for WeChat, if you have WeChat, you can scan, then we can send out that uh, handout through that WeChat. And for those right. who do not have WeChat, we'll go ahead and send that out through email as well. Oh, uh, I don't know if we have the email list. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. If we do not have an email list, uh, we will definitely give you our contact information at the end and you can connect with either me or Michelle uh, via email or phone and request that we send you that information. Yeah, because we share a lot of information and we talk through. Uh, the first part, uh, we can go slower than the last, because we have a lot of content. We, we, we do have, have a lot so of content, many. so yeah. we're kind of talking a little fast. So um, Yeah, we may, we may go uh, very fast at the, uh, the last two parts because the time limit. Okay, let me start this session. This is a, how do you introduce yourself in a very effective way and create a great first impression? Uh, this is very uh, often that um, I have people, you know, uh, meet with me in, in my coaching sessions or in my training classes um, at work. Then people say, well, you know, we, we have this kind of introduction. It happens all the time, especially uh, if you are meeting uh, people, some of the people in the meeting that um, uh, you don't know or they don't know you. 
So we do this. And a lot of times I heard my friends, my uh, clients um, talk about uh, themselves uh, in a way very, very simple. For example, I use my name here. Well, uh, I'm Michelle, I'm a uh, engineer or I'm a dev in the uh, office team. Right. Or if they know people, if it's, uh, you know, uh, if they, they are uh, people coming from different companies, they may say, okay, uh, my name is Michelle. I'm a developer uh, in the Microsoft uh, Office team. So that's about it, right? Occasionally people add one more thing. Oh, I work on uh, the, uh, the uh, analytical, uh, analytical features for Office. That's, that's their introduction uh, most of the time. Now, how do we do this uh, maybe you know, there are many different ways, but I want to talk about one way uh, that can make it a little bit different and leave something um, more than this to other people. Let's go to the next slide. Uh oh, hold on one second. It's not moving. Okay, so I'm going okay. just to talk about just, it. Just one uh, second. When, yeah. So, It'll catch up in a moment. The way we are going to do it is, um, I call it personal brand. So you use your personal brand as a um, way to talk who you are. And that, when we say personal brand, that means how you show up and how other people see you. It's a, something that you can build it, right, intentionally. Even if you don't build your personal plan, brand, you never heard about this word, that's fine. Because when people ask you, for example, uh, other people talk about Michelle, if they know me, they will use a couple of words to describe me. That's the brand <laughs> uh, I left for them, right? The impression they got of me. Uh, if you know, okay, everybody has a brand, it's like a product, everybody have a brand, then you will start to purposely build it and how you say in your introduction, that can be one of the way to do it. Uh, there are many different ways to put together your personal introduction, including this, I call it a per, uh, personal brand statement. Uh, this is one of the ways of doing that. If you search online, uh, personal brand, you will find uh, many different uh, uh, formulas there. So the formula I'm showing you here, I hope you have a pen and a uh, paper, you can start to write down. Uh, these are the you know, three steps. The first step, you want to think about your own strengths or your core skills. This is uh, how you are different than others, right? How does your mix of strengths and skills makes a difference of you to other people? For example, when I was working at Microsoft, I use this uh, uh, example so that people who are working in Microsoft or in other companies can relate more because um, today I'm not doing, uh, you know, that's not my today's job, but uh, I'm doing uh, uh, the kind of things I, I mentioned in the, my beginning, in my 30 seconds introduction in the beginning. Um, this is more related to your work. So I use my um, uh, personal brand. I developed when I was at Microsoft. Uh, I list a couple of things there. Uh, of course, I have other skills, a lot of things, but these are the ones differentiate me to other people in Redmond, in the headquarter. Um, and these are the ones I want people remember me. So I emphasize, oh, I know about China. Uh, I also know how to get customer insights. And I did a lot of product planning and marketing. I have those skills and I also know how to execute. So I list down these uh, couple of things here. Then after you list uh, your core uh, strengths, skills you want to emphasize, then you think about, okay, what is your unique contribution or the value to the organization, right? Uh, for me, when I was working there, well, I really spent time focusing on the China strategy, China, things related to China, because I like, uh, at that time, I really wanted to do things uh, really related to China. That's my strength, and that's where I want people to remember me. So uh, the things I did uh, and the kind of value uh, I have for Microsoft, I said, well, I can develop a China strategy. Uh, I do this, uh, you know, uh, product planning and marketing for the Chinese users. And I also do the execution part, bring products to China. 
So after you list down these kind of things, then you can start to put them together and uh, uh, develop a, a couple of sentences. We call it a personal brand statement. So you merge these together and make it uh, in some sentences. For example, the one I put here is, uh, I help Microsoft develop products suitable for the Chinese market and bring the products to these customers. I do this through my understanding of the market, my skills in finding customer insights and the product planning, and my experience in go-to-market strategy and execution. You see, it's a kind of a uh, massage of these things uh, you might, you know, I had in the two uh, parts uh, earlier. So that's how the tool works. Um, your personal brand statement. Now let's go to the next page. Uh, so I give you this tool and it's your turn to craft your own um, personal uh, brand statement. And uh, I also give you a template uh, that you can use, right? My name is blah, blah, blah. I am a program manager or a software engineer. Um, I do or I help uh, something uh, through using my skill one, two, three, and four. And here, then you massage this together and you can do your introduction. So this is a, a personal brand statement plus your introduction. And uh, again, with the personal brand statement I just showed you, uh, I put it here because I change, I change the roles pretty often in Microsoft. The way uh, I talk, I can, you know, make it, you know, just be your way to talk. So I start with, so, okay, I'm Michelle Zhou. I do this, 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 my personal brand statement. Then I talk about, I can say, oh, my current role is to manage the ecosystem for XYZ product in China um, or for the China market. If you want to know anything about China, you can come to chat with me. So I open it, invite people, come to me. And, you know, this really worked very well for me. When I was in, China, uh, in Microsoft, you know, uh, I joined uh, in the mid of 2000 something, 2000, um, at that time, Bill Gates was still um, working full time at Microsoft. And within one year, you know, everybody know me, Michelle is the person, uh, the China person or the China expert. Oh. Uh, I was in Redmond and then I was invited to uh, do a presentation for Bill Gates on, the China internet market. I was like just one year into the company at that time. So it really worked. And people, they, they meet me, they say, oh, you're the China person. It looks like the China is in carved <laughs> in my forehead. <laughs> All right. So that's, uh, uh, that's how the tool uh, it is. And uh, we also, I put the uh, formula uh, down here. It's your turn. Uh, let's take a few minutes and write down your own, um, your own uh, brand statement. And then later we will uh, practice. So I will give you a couple of minutes here. Okay, do we wanna give them five full minutes? Would that work? Um, what do you think? Just, uh, yeah, uh, we probably will move on sooner than that, but uh, let's, let's take okay. a, you know. A couple of minutes. Of, of okay. Recording. Also, I wanted to pause for a moment and see if there might be any questions. We haven't uh, opened it up for questions at all. Um, if anybody has questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in the chat and uh, we'll check from time to time and try to get those answered for you. But let's go ahead and give you guys, I'm thinking five minutes, which is probably not a huge amount of time to do this, but uh, at least it'll give you a chance to think about it a little bit, maybe write some notes on the paper. Right. So I would, um, I think, you know, with the very limited time, you will not have something very crisp or uh, beautiful <laughs> at this time. <laughs> Just to write down a couple of keywords, use the formula, you know, mm -hmm. uh, try it. And then you put together maybe not a full sentence for now, because later you will uh, go to the breakout room and uh, you will practice it. Uh, what you can do now is just organize your thoughts. Try this formula, organize mm -hmm. your thoughts and write down um, maybe not four sentences, but uh, you know, the key things you want to put it there. Then when you had um, later, when you go to the breakout room, you can practice that. You can 
try to use it with your uh, new made friends in that room. Absolutely. Yes. I think you guys in a few minutes could hopefully maybe fill out the template, the blue area there. And at least have, um, you know, my name is Nicole. I am an English um, language and communication coach. I help second language English speakers using. Yes. Anyhow. Yeah, yeah, you can say so, using my expertise. In blah, yes, blah, blah, I mean, blah. using my expertise, using my, okay, anyhow. So it's not easy and quick to do, but at least in a few minutes, in five minutes, I think you guys can get a good start on this. So take just a few minutes and we will be back in a moment. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. I see one popped up here. Yeah, one question here is how to build deep personal connections. So that's not just in a uh, situation that you do a little bit of social chat um, before we start to talk about work. Uh, you probably, uh, that's the, the, the social interaction before we start work is just as, you know, a beginning. You probably need to invest a little bit uh, more time and uh, uh, more energy in that. Yeah, absolutely. Building some more deeper relationship is going to take multiple contacts with the same person and having many conversations and going to coffee, having lunch together, spending more time together. And you're not going to have a deep personal connection with a lot of people, but probably a handful of people. But in business situations, we're looking uh, to just I guess meet people, build our network up, uh, get to know who's around us and maybe, uh, you know, who we would like to get to know better, uh, who can help us, who we can help. So uh, the more people that you meet, the more doors that can open and the more opportunities that you have to move up in your career, to, to do more interesting things in your life. So yeah. building deep connections takes a long time and, and can take years, really years. Mm -hmm. But would be open if you're open and you share who you are. People are open back and they share about themselves. Right. Uh, I think one of the topics that we can talk in the future um, is how do you find mentors? Mm -hmm. uh, I helped a lot of people, um, you know, find mentors, then uh, how they can use their mentors, right? It's a mutual beneficial, not just uh, you use them, they also. Uh, learn from you. Uh, there's a, a lot of things we can do here. Uh, I I'm writing it down as a topic for the future uh, because I'm very specialized in career development and the leadership. Uh, there's a lot of things uh, Nico and I can join to uh, put together in the future. Yeah, how to find sponsors, mm -hmm. how to find uh, mentors. Great. Yeah. Uh, keep on sending your <coughs> thoughts, your um, comments, questions uh, in the chat. We will collect these and, uh, you know, uh, we probably will do more workshops in the future. Uh, no matter what platform uh, we will, uh, this, this gives us a lot of uh, ideas on, okay, these are the things people care about, then we can put together uh, something for you. Mm -hmm. All right, I think it's time to move on. Uh, okay. If you haven't finished your personal brand statement, that's fine. Um, again, just have some ideas, then later you can use it. Let's go to the next page. All right. Oops. <clears throat> so it's my freezing again? Got I don't know why it does that. Okay, let me see. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'll, I'll just stop and reshare here. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, is there another question in the chat? Well, or, I'm, or if your here. computer is having issues, then should I, um, uh, I share mine? It is. I'm not sure. It seems that we stop a little bit that it does that. Oh, I think my connection is fine. It's just when we stop for a few minutes, it seems to want to freeze. I'm not sure why. Okay. Okay. All right. So, we're back. Oh, there we go. One thing I want to uh, also help you understand is your introduction, it will be uh, tailored by the people you talk with. Remember when Nico and I started, uh, we did our 30 seconds introduction. In that demo, my introduction is very different uh, um, compared to the one I just showed you when I was working at Microsoft. And here is another one. This one is <clears throat> my podcast. 
Uh, I have two podcasts and I have the information in the, I think uh, when you sign up for this uh, session, you see those information of our introduction and my introduction is much longer than what I did in the very beginning, the 30 seconds. Um, I have two podcasts. One is in Chinese, one is in English. The Chinese one is called uh, Tim Michelle Jiang Shu Mei Guo Gu Shi. Uh, you can find it on Himalaya um, FM application. And the English one is called In China with Michelle Zhou. It's on all those uh, major um, podcast platform. So in that podcast, every session, I start with this uh, introduction. Welcome to In China with Michelle Zhou, and I'm your host, Michelle. I'm the founder and CEO of Pacific Technologies Consulting Group. We help American and Chinese organizations learn from each other, bridge their needs, and grow their businesses internationally. See, this is very different than the introduction I did uh, earlier uh, when we started, right? Because the audience are very different. Uh, I do consulting for companies uh, if they do US-China cross-border business. And uh, this is a, a podcast that targeted this kind of audience. The, or professionals who are interested in China or people who are doing business with China or um, st university students who are thinking about uh, going to work in China or whoever is interested in China. So I have audience worldwide. This is uh, talking to them. So when you do your introduction, um, think about who are the people you are talking with? Uh, what is, you know, the things that you have for your, we are talking about the business for now, uh, in your work that you engage with them. So you tailor it. All right, now let's move on. Then how do you say your introduction? Well, uh, Nicole has a lot of tips and uh, things to watch. I learned a lot from him, cause, uh, from her, because she helped me correct the, the, the introduction in my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the way how I say it, because there are some things I pronounced. Uh, Nico will say, what? What did you say? <laughs> All right, Nico, your okay. turn. All right, so how you say your introduction. So you want to help people pronounce and remember your name if it's not a common name. And this goes for second language speakers, people from other countries with names that are coming from languages that may be unfamiliar to people, but it also goes for Americans as well. And I'm gonna give you an example from my name actually, and what I have to do sometimes because I have an unusual last name. First of all, let me talk about my first name. So my first name is Nicole. Now, all Americans are familiar with the name Nicole. They've heard it often enough. It's, um, it's not extremely common, but it's common enough that they've heard it before. And there are some famous Nicoles like Nicole Kidman. So Americans are all familiar with that and they know it's pronounced Nicole. But most of my students, the people I work with are coming from other languages and they have kind of internalized that the stress goes on the first part of an American name. So they always call me Nicole, right? And at this point, I'm so used to hearing that, that I, I really just don't even pay attention anymore. Um, but it's Nicole, and it's Nicole, stress in the second part, because my name is of French origin, it came from the French language. And so French tends to stress the end points, right? Nicole, rather than the beginning of the first syllable. And coincidentally, the name Michelle also has that stress pattern. So Nicole, Michelle, and a few other names. My mom's name, Colleen, and uh, another French name, Monique also have that stress pattern where they're stressing that second part. Now here's where it gets a little more interesting. My last name. My last name is of Germanic origin, so it, it's from German. So Americans don't know what to do with the AU in my name because AU can be pronounced different ways in English. So some people try and say Kaup. Occasionally people are recognize it as German and will pronounce it Kaup. But usually, I always have to spell it. If somebody says, what's your last name? I automatically spell it. I don't even say it. I just say it's K-A-U-P. I don't even say it. I just spell it. So that's something for you to remember as well. You know, spell your name if you know nobody's going to get it. And I always kind of add this in it. It's, it's pronounced cow, like the animal, cow. 
And I usually get people kind of tilt their head and look at me like, what are you talking about? And I say, you know, cow, but you add the P to the end. And I, and I invariably have to moo. I have to say moo, moo. And they still look at me like they don't know what I'm talking about, but eventually we kind of get it. So uh, you can see that this does not only happen to people, you know, people that have names from other cultures, it also happens to some of us Americans. <laughs> and I know, Michelle, you have a story also regarding your name. Oh, you are muted, Michelle. <laughs> Okay, yes. Uh, when I came to, um, to the US for my MBA, that was back in the uh, 90s, and I was using my Chinese name, it's Ying Yi Zhou. Uh, a lot of times people could not, uh, yeah, they were not sure about how to pronounce my name, and uh, I heard people call me Ying Gai Zhu. So, <laughs> there are a couple of things I did. <laughs> One is, of course, I was very patient at helping them to, you know, say my Chinese name. Um, then when I started working in the U.S., I decided to use my English name, which is Michelle Zhou. Uh, even with Michelle, uh, some, uh, Michelle Zhou, sometimes people pronounce my last name with very funny things like uh, Zhu. Then I tell people, well, uh, it's so, it's like, oh. Uh, it's not the, uh, you know, the zoo where animal lives. So that, <laughs> that helps people remember my name, uh, Michelle Zhou. Nice. All right. So also on the same note, um, if you, you know, you're new to the, new to the United States, um, you're not familiar with all the possible names that are, that are out there, especially last names. So you want to ask people, it's better to ask them how to pronounce their name than to just stay quiet and not say it. it. It's definitely good to remember people's names and to use their names, but it's very appropriate to ask for their help on how to say their name. So you know what, um, can, can, you, can you say that again for me? Um, can you pronounce your name? Could you write that for me? Um, I'm sorry, I'm really not, you know, I really want to know how to pronounce your name. Can you help me out with that? So people yeah, will definitely appreciate that. Right, and I coach people worldwide. A lot of times, uh, those names are pretty hard to pronounce. Right, and I, right. I wasn't sure, right? In different country, pronounced differently. So I, uh, when I'm not sure, I ask people, can you teach me how to say your name? Absolutely. To make sure yeah. I and, pronounce and I think it correctly. That, I think that is making a, a, a good personal connection with people too. It shows that you're taking enough interest that you really want to say their name correctly. Um, even if maybe you're not able to, you're, you're trying. And, and I think people really do uh, respond to that. So. All right. So I know a lot of our viewers are Chinese today. And a lot of um, Chinese have English names. Not all do, but a lot have chosen an English name. Um, if you have chosen an English name, it's probably now your legal name. And it's probably not something you will change. So you want to make sure that you are able to pronounce that name so that other people can understand it. And uh, on that note, let me give you just a quick little story. When I was teaching in China, and um, in the first few weeks that I got to the college I was teaching at, um, a student ran up to me one day as I was walking to class and like, hi teacher, I'm so excited to meet you. You know, oh, I'm so excited that you're the foreign, new foreign teacher. There was only two of us foreign teachers. So uh, it was very exciting when there was a new foreign teacher on campus. So um, he came up to me and he says, hi, my name is, and I was like, what? And I asked him, you know, I'm sorry, what's your name? And he said it again. And I was still like, I'm sorry, what? And so finally um, he wrote it down for me and I went, oh, Evan. Um, he wasn't able to pronounce the V sound. And, and strangely, the name Evan is actually fairly simple. And with just a very quick lesson on how to pronounce the V, he's able to you know, pronounce his name correctly. But Michelle told me that her husband's English name is Charles. And I said, oh no, that is a very difficult uh, name to choose for most second language speakers, no matter what language they're coming from, Chinese or another language, Charles is going to be very, very difficult to pronounce because it ends with R, a dark L sound, and a Z sound, and they are all blended together. And each of those sounds individually is difficult, and putting them together becomes impossible. 
So it's not to say that if your name is Charles, you can never pronounce it, but it will take some practice and some coaching to be able to pronounce each of those individual sounds and finally to put them together as one. So it's not hopeless if you have a name that's difficult to pronounce, but it will take definitely some time and coaching to make sure that it's understandable. Esther's another one. Esther's a name that's not extremely common in English currently. And um, especially what would throw us is, is the silent H in there too. So, and then the er at the end. So that would be a tricky one too. And things with V's and L's and R's and especially in combination tend to be tricky. Oh, and finally, initializations. When you're doing your introduction, you may have some combinations of initials in there, such as CEO, MBA, IT director, UW. So for this, you wanna make sure that you pronounce each of those letters separately, and you're going to hold the last letter a little bit longer. So listen like this, CEO, MBA, IT. The last one's a little bit weird, even for me. <laughs> I'm not from Seattle, and when I hear you dub, I'm like, what? What does that mean, you dub? Did you want to add something there, Michelle? Yes, because you, you were frozen. At least I couldn't hear you for a little while. Oh, sorry. I'm frozen. Let me go ahead and change. I'm going to change my... Um... Uh, it's fine. Just Now it's okay. Just continue. I'm just going to change my uh, Wi-Fi channel real quick, and that should hopefully help. Where, where was the last thing you heard? Uh, you, uh, you talked about the initialization. Okay, and let me go ahead. You say every word, say every letter clearly. Okay, I'll and go ahead and say that again. So for initializations, when you're doing your introduction, you may have one or more of these in your introduction. So you wanna make sure that you are pronouncing each letter clearly and separately, and that you are going to stress and, and elongate the last letter a little bit more. Like this, CEO, MBA, IT, UW. UW's a little bit weird. It's weird for me too, because um, I had not heard that before moving to Seattle. Uh, dub is the first syllable of the letter W. So you wanna pronounce it UW, but you wanna still hold on to the dub a little bit longer, UW. You dub. Stretch that a little bit. All right. I see there's some questions in there. Do we want, is there anything in there, Michelle, that we want to address at the moment? Uh, we are fine. The questions are already addressed by. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Right. We, we need to move on okay. faster. Yeah. Oh, okay. How to create a great first impression online. I went and looked through a little bit to see how you guys appeared on your camera there. And I think, uh, you guys are doing a pretty good job, actually. Um, in online video meetings, you want to make sure that you are making eye contact, just like you would make eye contact if you were talking in person. And what that means is that you are facing your camera, that you are looking into your camera. What I often see is things like this, where I see somebody's ceiling, or I see the top of their head, or they're looking at their second monitor over here, and I kind of see the side of their face and their ear. So, Eye contact, look at your camera. Um, I notice you all have your videos turned off, which is actually uh, good in a large meeting like this. You want to minimize on-camera distractions so other people aren't distracted by seeing what's going on in your, in your house there. So it's a good idea to turn off your video. And if you are in a smaller meeting where you're in, or you're actually um, speaking and the camera's on you, minimize distractions. Make sure you're not eating, your cat's not jumping up on your computer, that your small children aren't there bouncing around in front of the screen. Um, I was gonna say, I have a, I have a quick story. Um, this happened to me oh, a month or two ago. I was in actually a webinar. It was a one hour webinar, the kind where we're not going to be talking pretty much. So I get in there, you know, I, I stop my video. I, I'm muted so nobody sees what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> But the lady that was right under the speaker that I was able to see her picture and everybody else was vigorously painting a canvas the entire time. And I kept thinking, turn that off. I'm like, what are you doing? It was very, very distracting to, because I kept trying to see what she was painting. It was very strange. 
So turn off your videos so others can't see that. Um, and also stay on mute when you're not talking so you know, we don't hear your phone ringing, your dog barking and those sorts of things. Um, close apps that make noise. If you have email notifications, so that sort of thing. Um, you all look good. I notice everybody's muted and um, the videos are off. So everybody's good with that. Smile. Just like in an on-person, in-person meeting, in an online meeting, you want to smile as well. Look friendly, look approachable. In American culture, we smile a lot. We're just trained to do it. <laughs> so make sure to smile as well. It's kind of expected and it makes you seem friendly and happy and likable to others. Be confident like yourself. I know a lot of people kind of lack self-confidence, especially when you're speaking a second language, you might be like, oh my gosh, my English is not that great. You know what, forget that. Just be who you, be who you are, love yourself. I mean, seriously think, you know what? I'm really cool, you know, I've done really cool things. I, I have this really great job. You know, people wanna know about me. They're interested in, in, in finding out about me. If you really like yourself, you think you, you're a cool person, other people will too. So just go in with that mentality of, hey, I'm likable, people like me, and they will. Be yourself, don't try to like, if you're an introvert, don't try to like all of a sudden be really chatty, it's just not who you are. If you're kind of a serious person, don't start making jokes because it's just not, not who you are. So be yourself, don't be too serious, don't be afraid of making mistakes. You know, things happen. We're on here. It's like, oh my gosh, the PowerPoint's not working. What am I going to do? Don't be too serious about it. It's like, oh, huh, okay. It's, it, you know, make a joke of it. Have a sense of humor. It's not, you know, it's not a big deal. And be friendly. Before you get onto these calls, if you know you're going to have the opportunity to talk to people, prepare ahead of time. Prepare some questions that you think that you could use to talk to people. And if you really can't remember how to make small talk, you want to print off the, the, um, the handout that we're going to send you later and keep it next to your computer so you'll have a little cheat sheet that you know, okay, I'm talking to strangers. I'm going to ask them where they're located. I'm going to ask them where they're from. I'm going to, you know, ask them what they're doing this weekend, that sort of thing. So keep a cheat sheet. And... If you are not extremely chatty yourself, get others to talk. Ask them the question and let them just talk. Show you're listening, make sure you nod your head, say uh-huh, right. You know, you wanna make sure that you are also participating in that conversation, even if you are not doing a huge amount of talking. Okay. We've gotten to the breakout section. Um, we are going to give you guys 10 minutes in breakout rooms. We're going to assign you groups of three people at random, so we don't know who you will be paired with. And we want you to practice what you've just learned, introducing yourself in an effective way and creating a great first impression. Make sure to incorporate your personal brand statement if you've been able to create that. And uh, once you're finished with that, go ahead and do a little small talk, kind of practice that, um, kind of get used to that idea of what do I talk to with strangers or colleagues I haven't seen for a while. Um, so hopefully your introduction ideally should be about 30 seconds, no more. Since you guys don't have one already practiced and polished, it, it may go up to about a minute or so but hopefully you'll have a good seven minutes to do a little, little small, small talk practice. If we are able, we're going to try to kind of enter some of the rooms and kind of listen. I'm not sure if we'll have that ability, but um, hopefully we will. Uh, I'm pretty sure Nicole and Michelle will be like, get, will be in the break room as well. Seems like that's random. Oh, we will yeah. be assigned to a breakout room. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sounds yeah, that's good to fine. Me. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do uh, 10 minutes and oh, here we go. Just go ahead and join your breakout room. When yeah, I already like to open the break room and okay. around three to four people in, will be in a room and just free to talk. Okay, and you guys will be queued when, the, when your breakout is over and you'll automatically be put back into the main room.
uh, Nicole. Uh, hi Nicole, I think it's maybe it's better you just post uh, your last PPT so everyone knows what to do um, in each room.
Oh, I think people are coming back now. Hope um, many of you had a chance to meet new people and have a chance to, you know, uh, practice what we just learned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The all break, all break rooms will be close. I don't know, but like the assistant said, like 20 minutes, 20 seconds. Yeah, <laughs> I think like it's this. already closed and the people are coming back. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, while waiting, and people could just scan our SQ, like the, here's the our SEC newsletter, and also what uh, we had official account, and also like we have a YouTube channel called the Seattle Entrepreneurship Club, Xiaodu Chuanye Xiehui. You can see the latest uh, video on this channel. Okay. okay. Everyone's back. Okay, since everyone's back, okay, wait, let's move on. We can, I, I will stop share. Uh, Nicole, you can move, uh, go on your share. All right. Oh my goodness, we already covered that. Let's see, I'm gonna have to slide down here a little bit. Wait, yeah, there. so we should move. No, uh, we don't yes, do that. right here. Uh-huh. Okay. And I don't know, are there any questions in the chat that we need to address at the moment? How are um, we doing on time? Hmm. Uh, we, we need to move on. It's All pretty right. late now. Okay. Yeah. If so you guys it, do have questions, just put them in the chat and we will try to answer them as we can. Right. We're going to move on to the next section. Yeah, and uh, I will speed up. <laughs> 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 All right. So the next session, we are going to talk about how do you uh, politely speak up in a meeting and share your ideas. And sometimes, uh, you know, my uh, clients, uh, they, they said, well, Michelle, I got a feedback from my manager. They said, uh, I should speak up more uh, in meetings. And then I said, why you don't? Uh, well, there are many different reasons. Let's go to the next page. Sometimes people say, well, you know, uh, I don't have a chance to speak because other people speak very fast and nonstop. Uh, and uh, English is not my first language. When I have something I prepare myself, I want to say then it's already passed. Or sometimes people worry about, oh, my idea is not good. I, you know, I'm, maybe people already thought about this, uh, you know, it's not adding value to the conversation. Um, or people will laugh at me, this is, that's a stupid idea or something. Or sometimes uh, people say, well, um, it's hard to express myself in a meeting. Um, or a lot of times, uh, you know, when I'm trying to say something, people may not be able to understand me easily. So I just uh, don't waste uh, anybody's time and I keep myself uh, silent. Um, when you are not speaking up in a meeting, well, as we said, right, you probably will be viewed that you are not particip participating or you're, you know, you don't get, uh, gain the kind of visibility or your ideas, your great, uh, you know, ideas, your thoughts, you are not really sharing it out. So managers really encourage our people, well, speak up, share your ideas. Then how do you do that? Let's go to the next page. Well, the first thing is, if you have those uh, negative thoughts, right, telling yourself, oh, I'm, you know, my, my ideas are not good. It's, uh, people will um, think I'm stupid or, um, you know, uh, I, yeah, uh, everybody already know this. I, I shouldn't say anything. Well, uh, or sometimes when I have a question, I assume everybody, they already know this and I'm the only one have such a stupid question, right? Or I, pre uh, I don't want people to know that I even don't know this. Uh, there's a research shows that a lot of people have this, uh, this kind of uh, negative self-talk, not just to people uh, from Asia. It's also in the US, uh, many Americans have the same kind of uh, negative self-talk. Um, the research shows that uh, in a university, um, top university like MIT, uh, they did some research. Well, when the students, uh, they got there and uh, nobody asked the questions, when there was one person raised hand and asked a 
one question, and all the other people was was uh, feeling, oh, I'm so glad that he asked this question because I had the same question. I'm just too shy to ask, right? Uh, so this kind of things happens a lot. Maybe you have a good idea, or maybe you have a question. Uh, if you don't share, you never get it addressed, or you never have a chance to contribute that. So, uh, first, uh, you know, think about yourself. What do I want to do? Well, you prepare your mindset before you go to the meeting. You want, if you prepare yourself, well, I wouldn't uh, worry too much about how I'm being viewed by others. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, I know I'm not perfect. My English has an accent. I may make grammar mistakes. Um, I, you know, contribute my ideas so that I, um, I can, gain more visibility and I, I want to be part of a team, etc. And I want to be here to learn. I want to see this, my sharing as a learning opportunity. So this can help you to uh, prepare your mindset and uh, you know, accept yourself for not being perfect. Um, even though sometimes you said something wrong, that's totally okay. All right, next. Then how do you speak up in a meeting? Well, Nico, um, I think uh, it's your turn to share with people some ideas. Sorry about that, I was muted. I was just looking at the chat to see if there's anything we need to talk about. I see you give feedback to me. Oh yeah, I want to address this one. It's great. This is a very good feedback on, you know, I see individual contributors should also give feedbacks to manager or the meeting moderator that, you know, um, as, as somebody hosting this mm -hmm. meeting, you can encourage everyone to talk and you can give people the time to talk, right? Uh, this is the one technique we use a lot. When I coach people, I tell them, if you feel it's impolite to interrupt others, uh, you have something you want to say, but you cannot insert yourself in, well, you can, you know, uh, Nico will talk about a lot of the ideas, but uh, I also tell people, uh, one idea is you can talk to the meeting host um, that they, they can help, you know, they can help, they can pause and say, ask, uh, does anybody have something to talk or to share or anybody have questions? Or uh, the meeting host can say, well, everybody have five minutes to, uh, to you know, uh, share their ideas, S make turns. Everybody have an opportunity in the room to talk. This is a great, thank you. All right. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to speak up in a meeting. Um, oh, no, shoot. <laughs> I got stuck again. Isn't that funny? Oh, maybe it's when I open the chat that it seems to get stuck. Hold on one second. Pardon me while I get that going again. Okay. Oops. Here we need to move up just a moment. Okay. Okay, so how to speak up in a meeting. Um, if you can find a natural pause that is good, Listen for when the speaker kind of slows down and seems to kind of stop a bit, or when they actually have a down pitch. Like in the speech, they'll be talking, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then all of a sudden they'll kind of drop at the end, and that kind of means I'm finished. So listen for that as well. On video here, you can see me if you're on video, raising your hand if there's not too many people that they can actually you know, see, see enough of the participants. Raising your hand is a good signal. The, um, the speaker may actually just kind of stop and, and, and ask, um, you know, ask if you have a question, or they may ask you to hold the question till later or put it in the chat if it's a larger group. Polite ways to interrupt. You can always say, excuse me. Excuse me is kind of the universal, like I want to interrupt something. You can use the person's name. You might just say, um, excuse me, Nicole, can I ask a question? Um, excuse me, Michelle, can I ask a question? And that is a very polite, inappropriate way to do that. Um, excuse me, can I add something? So sometimes you do just have to jump in and interrupt, especially with people who talk and talk and talk and really, um, you know, aren't opening the door for others to add. You might just need to stop. Excuse me. And that, you know, will we'll stop that. Um, 
excuse me, could I interrupt for a moment? That's another way. Um, excuse me, um, I agree with you, but, so those are all polite, but remember, raise your hand if you can and insert excuse me in there, and that is just fine. All right, moving along to how to express yourself so others understand you. So a lot of the a lot of people will say, well, people just don't understand me when I speak. Well, you need to kind of take control of that situation. Um, your accent might not be perfect. You're doing the best you can. And you might need to kind of take some control and say, well, maybe I'm speaking too fast. Maybe I'm just feeling really nervous and I'm just like, oh my God, like take a breath, a couple of breaths and slow yourself down. A lot of times second language speakers tend to speak a lot faster when they're nervous or they speak faster because they think it makes them sound more fluent when it just makes them more difficult to understand. So slow down if people are having trouble understanding you. Simplify your speech. Avoid overly complex sentences. Remember this is the, the idea is to communicate your ideas in a fairly quick way so other people easily understand you. Avoid thinking that conversation is a TOEFL exam where you're trying to use the largest, most impressive grammar and words possible. Bring it down. Um, studies have shown that when they look at the speech level of politicians, of our president, our former president, other presidents, other politicians, they find that they tend to speak in a range of between a sixth and an eighth grade level. So they're speaking with a grammar and a word choice that is very understandable to people who are 12 to 14 years of age. So you also want to think about that too. The idea is not to impress people with your speech, but that to communicate your ideas clearly and easily to them. So simplify things. Oh, especially for Chinese, pay attention to your verb tenses when you're talking. It's a little bit confusing when you start talking in the past tense and all of a sudden you're in the present and we kind of get lost because we can't figure out if you're still talking about the past or if we're in another story now. It's like, be very careful and, and monitor yourself. If you're talking about something that happened before, stay in the past tense. Don't forget those ED endings in past tense verbs. Hmm. All right, and also for Chinese, make sure to pronounce all the syllables in the longer words. Make sure not to leave out the middle ones. Excuse me a second. Mm. All right, uh, words like this. I sometimes hear Chinese speakers say something like government. Make sure it's government. You get all three of those syllables. Don't leave out the middle ones. Um, opportunity, like opportunity. Slow yourself down and make sure you get all those syllables in there. I've heard understand a lot. Understand? No, understand. So, just a, a just a little quick pronunciation hint there. I know those longer words are kind of tricky, but uh, slow down. It'll be easier to get them. Avoid upspeak. Oh, I hear so much talk about this, and even amongst native speakers. I hear a lot of speech therapists talking about this recently. Um, if you are using a rising pitch, if your tone is going up, you are generally communicating that you're asking a question, or that you are unsure of something, or that you are not confident. And especially in a business situation, you do not want to convey that you are not confident in what you're saying. So listen and see if you can hear it. Um, hi, I'm Nicole Kaup. Well, I have a hard time doing this. <laughs> that didn't actually sound convincing to me either. I'm Nicole Kaup. Ah, I can't do it. When you're kind of putting that question up tone on things, it, it, I'm kind of like, do you know the answer? Do you not? Are you asking me a question or are you just lacking in self-confidence? So make sure that when you say something, you say it like, yes, I know what I'm talking about. There are 
50 states in the United States. And you go down at the end because you are confident in that. Versus there are 50 states in the United States. You know, as you're kind of going up there and you're saying like, I don't know. So careful there, that's called up speak. All right, and if you can, you know that you're gonna have a meeting, it's gonna be a virtual meeting. See if you can prepare ahead of time. Prepare, prepare some questions. Maybe print out that sheet that we're going to send you that, um, that has uh, some different questions you can talk to strangers about and colleagues about. So I would recommend that. Okay, you're in charge of the conversation. Check for understanding, okay? If you're talking to somebody, they are most likely looking at you and smiling if they are understanding you. They're happy to be present. They like talking to you. They're smiling. They have a good expression on their face and they're making eye contact. They're giving you cues that they're following. They're saying, uh-huh. They're nodding their head, right? Uh-huh, okay. They're like, they're giving you cues. They're participating in the conversation with you. That means they're understanding they're following you. They want you to speak more. And when you finished your, your sentence, you'll notice that they respond fairly quickly when you finish talking. When people don't understand, their face will show it. They will look confused. They might seem kind of worried. They, they just don't know what's going on. They may stay silent when you're talking. They, they're, they're not saying, uh-huh, they're not shaking their head, they're saying nothing. They're just kind of wondering what to do. And when you finish, there might be a very long pause because they, they don't know what to say. So again, try to take charge of that. And when you see that look of confusion on someone's face, ask if they understand. Maybe stop yourself and say, does that make sense? Are you following me? And they might say, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, can you repeat that? And then that's your cue to take a breath and slow down and try to repeat it again, maybe choose some different words. And if you're still not able to communicate, ask them if you can email it. Would it be okay if I emailed you my thoughts? And they will probably say, yes, please. Okay, so also take on that responsibility of, of making sure that people are understanding you, ask them. Is it clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, does that make sense? We like that expression a lot. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? We say it a lot. All right. Um, on to our last topic. Oh, we should speed it up, huh? <laughs> um, expressing differing opinions in a neutral, non-threatening way. Yeah, and let Michelle, me take it over. Yes. Mm -hmm. We need to speed up uh, more here. Uh, when I'm talking, Nicole, I see uh -huh. there's a, some sort of a mark on I the slide. Know. Yeah, if you can fix that. Yeah, right. I'll have to stop. It's, I think on my laptop, I'm accidentally hitting something that's yeah, doing that. Yeah, no problem. I will just talk. So okay. uh, I coach a lot of people and sometimes they come to me saying, well, Michelle, you know, a lot of times I have different ideas. Um, I disagree with other people. And when I say that in just in a direct way, sometimes I... Uh, offend people or people got offended. Uh, one real example is, let's go to the next slide. Uh, recently, I coached someone, uh, a, the, the, the lady is a Chinese, and she uh, expressed this in the meeting. And the other person, uh, you know, talked about something, and then she just, uh, uh, be very, she's very brave, right? She she's very direct. She said, "Well, I just talk what I in my mind." She said, "Well, I disagree. Uh, this will not work. It does not make sense. Uh, users will never find this feature. You should blah blah blah." So this is how she said, right? She came to me. She said, "Well, you know, Michelle, I think uh, uh, the I, I probably offended the other person. I never meant that. Uh, but after this meeting, uh, the other person." the attitude is very different, right? It become uh, distancing to me and uh, was not as warm as before, was not as uh, uh, responsive as before. So uh, I asked her what happened. She told me this is what she said. Well, um, then there, 
there can be different way of saying it. And of, uh, I, I helped her to think about uh, what can be some different way. And uh, more importantly, uh, I said, well, if you think that's the case, because you said something in the meeting um, that the other person got to, uh, you know, uh, feel uncomfortable, uh, offended, uh, then you can go and uh, have a private conversation with him and explain that uh, you come from a different culture and uh, you are very direct and your English may not uh, really express in what you really wanted to say in terms of your emotions. Um, so let him understand that you didn't want to offend anybody. Yeah, you explain that, then that will get the understanding. All right, so uh, Nicole is an expert uh, and an American, so she can share with us uh, when this kind of things happen, right? When we say, you know, so direct, uh, how American feels about it and what is uh, some, you know, different way of saying it. Yeah, go ahead. Nicole. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We want to start out by showing respect for the other person's work and opinions first. Um, you don't necessarily need to express that, but you want to go in thinking that I know this person did the best they could and um, I, I need to be kind. And you might say that, especially if you're their supervisor, you know, I can tell you've really put a lot of work into this. I mean, really let them know that, that you recognize that and that they didn't do a bad job, but maybe there are things that could be improved. So, First of all, ask permission to give feedback, especially if you're not the supervisor, but maybe the coworker. You could say things like, you know, I have a few ideas about this I'd like to share, if that's okay with you. And they'll say, oh, of course, yeah, yeah, let me, let me know, I, you know, I really like to uh, make this better. Um, can I offer a few suggestions? And again, they'll be like, oh, yes, yes, uh, of course. Um, Express your feelings, starting with the word I. You want to say, well, this is my opinion here. I think, I feel, I'm not sure. Make it clear that you're giving the, your opinion and advice and it is not something the other person must do. So it seemed a bit aggressive, what, what the original, um, in Michelle's example, her client, seemed a little bit aggressive and a little bit of an attack with so many negative words no and never and not it was you know it seems very harsh and the person i'm sure was very defensive and like hey you know i did a good job on this and, and you're you know making me feel terrible so here's some better ways that we could express that when she says i disagree we might say something like um May I share my thoughts on may I share my thoughts on this? Like kind of, you know, asking that permission of, well, instead of I disagree, like kind of saying it in a nicer way. Are you open to brainstorming some more ideas? I see your perspective. Can I share something from a different angle? So all of these are kind of well thought out, more polite ways of, of saying, you know, maybe I don't completely agree with you, but I would I would like to add something to what you've done without without hurting the other person's feelings. Instead of this will not work, which is like very abrupt, you might say, add, a f add more words to it. I don't think that will work. I'm not, I'm not sure this is the best solution. I'm not sure is always kind of a much softer way of, of um, you know, saying something like, no. It does not make sense. We say, I'm not sure that makes sense. Users will never find this feature, but I think users may have a hard time using the word like may or might, and I think really softens that and, and just makes it much more approachable. Or, or kind of saying, you know, I'd like to look at this part a little bit more, maybe we can improve here. Um, instead of you should, thinking, you know, I think you should. All right. All right, Michelle. Um, we could stop here or we could talk a little bit more. I have a few more slides or we could open things up for questions at this point. Oh, I think we just go through the slides really fast to, to just you know, okay. give people a little bit of information, maybe All not right. go to the details we're, of, we're or nearly, the examples. Yes, we're nearly finished, but I wanna give you guys, you know, a, a few, you know, five, 10 minutes to ask some questions as well. Um, 
So reading between the lines, that is an idiomatic phrase that means that um, the words don't always say exactly what they say. <laughs> that you need to kind of analyze the, the situation more to really understand the meaning because the words will not give you all the meaning. So here's a quick little graph that um, a doctor, I'm not sure what his, if it was a linguistics possibly, from UCLA did a study about the elements of communication. And he found that only 7% of communication was based on the words that were spoken. And that's actually quite shocking. But when you think about it, it makes sense that the, the thing that really spoke the loudest was the person's body language. And with body language, we're also including the facial expression. So you can tell very clearly what, well, at least on an American's face, what they're feeling usually. Um, and in addition, 38% of the communication came from the tone of voice, like the pitch that we're putting on things, the stress that we're putting on things. So those parts of pronunciation and body language and, and culture really do play a very important part in communication, more so than just the words, right? So body language, facial expression, and tone are far more important than the words said in determining meaning. Okay, so you need to pay more attention to the emotion that was behind the words than the words themselves. I'll give you an example. Um, if someone, if you're presenting something to your boss, your colleagues, whatever, and they say, oh, great, perfect, nice. That doesn't mean you did a great job. That just means they're saying, okay, it's a very kind of a neutral response. Although, oh, perfect, great. You know, that sounds really positive. It's really quite neutral. It's just kind of, okay. But if they have a lot more words and they're speaking at kind of a higher pitch, and you're hearing some motion say, that's really cool. I really love how you did that. When they're kind of adding more and going on, they really liked it. So look for that emotion. I mean, listen for that emotion. Are they going up? Wow, that is so cool. That is amazing. That is awesome. They're really stretching the words. The pitch is varying. That's your positive reaction there. Also look at the body language and facial expression. We all smile a lot. It doesn't mean we're happy. We're just trained to smile <laughs> for the most part. Um, can you read faces? What I hear a lot of times when I ask my, my students to talk, tell me about what English sounds like and how it compares to your native language, but also tell me what it looks like. When you look at the face of a native speaker, what does their face do? And is it different from what your face does when you speak your language? And they tell me like, Oh, they move their eyebrows a lot, right? There's a lot more movement in the face. So you need to pay attention to that because we are communicating with those facial expressions. And we're communicating more with those expressions than we are with words. So watch the eyebrows. Watch the tension in the face, especially around the mouth. When people are kind of annoyed, you know, you'll, you'll see lines around here. You'll see lines in the forehead up here. Look at the eyes. Are the eyes really big, like they're surprised? Are they kind of neutral? Or are the eyes kind of like squinting, like they're kind of maybe angry? So pay attention to those things. I'm gonna give you an example on the next page. I'm gonna give you some pictures and see if you can recognize what is being said. The face on the left that is all by itself is just a neutral face, no emotion there. But the other six, they're a little bit exaggerated, <laughs> I think, but I think you get the point. You can really see the emotion in the face. The first one, top left, happy, just general happy, not ecstatic, but you know, but generally happy, genuine, genuinely happy. Let's see if I can speak, blah, blah, blah. Genuinely happy. You'll notice that the smile reaches the eyes. The eyes are also smiling. The next one over in the middle there on the top, he looks like he's really surprised, right? That looks a little bit exaggerated. Also the one next to him looks kind of exaggerated. He looks like he's horrified or 
afraid, you know, oh. Down on the bottom left, he's looking kind of annoyed, mad. Oh, well, no, maybe the one in the middle is mad. Yeah, he's not happy. Well, and obviously the, the, the far one on the bottom, he's kind of sad. So there you go. <laughs> that was fairly easy. Hopefully you can kind of recognize the positive emotions, the negative emotions and, and the other ones. So practice really looking at, at Americans' faces and, and what they're doing as they're expressing themselves and telling stories. All right. So that is the end. And what was your biggest takeaway from this workshop? You know, what did you think was the, the most interesting thing, the biggest thing you learned, you know, what you're actually going to use? And go ahead and put that in the chat. We, you know, we're kind of eager to see, you know, what you guys learned and, and what you thought about our workshop. And in the same time, uh, we prepared a QR code. Uh, we created a WeChat group, especially for tonight. If you want to learn more about, uh, you know, uh, how do you express yourself effectively, communicate yourself effectively in English, um, not just in meetings, we have many different topics and we are collecting topics from you. And that's a good place to go. Uh, we will send out our handout uh, through this WeChat group if you join it. Uh, we will, if you don't have WeChat, that's fine. You can email us. We will sh give you our email address uh, in the last page. Uh, you can email us and uh, we will send you by email. All right. Michelle, could you take a look at the chat box up there? Because I know every time I look at the chat box, it kind of um, freezes my PowerPoint. So if you could go up there. And then I'll move on to the next slide in a moment once, once people have had a chance to scan the code. Yeah, so I have uh, seen some uh, feedbacks here. They like the uh, topics that we talked about and they thank us for putting the time, uh, you know, working on this. Uh, it, yes, uh, Nico and I spent uh, uh, days <laughs> working on this and we really want to uh, provide something useful to you. Um, so there, there are a lot of things, uh, you know, people like how to not be offensive. They like the self, the, the um, uh, personal brand, the intro introduction and the read between lines. Um, nice. Yeah. So a Good. lot of things. And um, what I'd like to send out kind of as a follow up as well would be maybe a little survey about what topics people would like to see in the future things mm -hmm. that they're having challenges with and would like us to do future workshops on. And I think um, we should put a cert little survey together and maybe, um, you know, have people kind of. Yeah. yeah, we would like to collect some more ideas so we know what you need help on or what you are interested in. And uh, Nico and I can put together uh, our knowledges, our experience and uh, uh, do more uh, this kind of a workshop to help help you. Yeah. yeah. Oops. Ooh, I don't know where those weird lines uh, are appearing. That is so, I didn't even do, touch do you the want computer. To, yeah. Do you want to <laughs> show the, uh, the, uh, and our email address? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, quick recap. These are just the four things that we covered today. Um, basically, uh, engaging in small talk, you know, interacting with people socially before the meeting. We talked about how to introduce yourself in an effective way. Michelle gave us a really great template for creating our own personal brand. Um, you also learned how to politely speak up during your meetings and how to express differing opinions in a neutral, non-threatening way. And finally, um, here is both of our contact information. Mine is on the left, Michelle's is on the right. Again, I am an English language and communication coach. You can email me there. I'm on WeChat as well. You can connect with me directly and uh, chat with me there. I'm on and LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, all those things. And I have a YouTube channel uh, that I have more than 120 videos on oral English topics, a lot of pronunciation things. So please go and visit my YouTube channel. There are many free lessons there. Yeah, Nico's uh, YouTube channel is great. I watched almost everything. Um, still, there's oh, still, 120 uh, some videos. That's a lot. Uh, I, I watched a lot. Yeah, still a lot of. Uh, still, there are things I know how to do it, but you know, it needs practice. Uh, so I encourage everybody to go there to watch it. Uh, 
uh, one thing I want to mention, the WeChat group we created, Nico and I are in the group, so you would be able to find us there and post your questions there. Uh, on my side, uh, you see my email, my WeChat, uh, uh, my LinkedIn. I always welcome people uh, connect me on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I mentioned the two podcasts that I have. Uh, a lot of people told me that the uh, the Chinese one, Tim Michelle, Jiang Shu, Mei Guo Gu, is really inspiring because I interview oh. people from all kinds of um, profession, and uh, many of them are really outstanding. And if for people who are interested in China on the business side, they can uh, listen to the English one in China with Michelle Zhou. All right, do we still have time for Q and A? Absolutely, we have six minutes officially, and oh. um, there are some. Messages in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nico and Michelle for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do we, okay. Mr. Admin, do we have time to take more questions or? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. I, oh, I just, okay. I just like everyone. Like, if you have some questions, you can just raise your hand. I think yeah, there is raise hand button. Oh, okay. I think at the bottom. Ooh, let's see. Um, I I I can see a few people on my screen, but not too many. So um. Uh, the admin you, will help. Yeah, you can you can just and, unmute yourself yeah, and yeah. You can just post on the chat room or just raise your hand. If I see you, I will just unmute, and you can just ask. Oh, perfect. Directly. Okay. So, oh, by the way, like the also like the today's video. Okay, I see some from Helen. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry. Hello, you can ask, yeah. Uh, hello, everyone, can you, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yes, uh, I am not very experienced user of Zoom, and but uh, what I managed to see and hear. Uh, Helen, oh. I think there are too much noise in your mic. Yes, that is another mobile. Uh, can you? I just can I, can you hear now? It's okay. Yeah, you can go ahead. Yeah. Is it better? Yes. Yes. It's better. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to say thank you very much. Very nice webinar. And just to say hello from Australia. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. We're glad that you joined you. us. <laughs> thank you very much. I think Helen is from Australia. Yes. Oh, wow. You're, you're joining us from Australia? Yes. Oh my goodness. Where, where are you in Australia? Melbourne. Oh, nice. Nice, nice. You guys are quiet out there. No, I, I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, I have a question here. I have a question for Nicole, if I can ask. Yes, of course. So as we know, there are so many engineers uh, in Seattle uh, who are from a different culture background with English as uh, the second language. I'm wondering uh, how much they can improve uh, in terms of uh, pronunciation and the accent based on your uh, experience. It really depends on your starting point. Uh, for people that have a fairly strong accent, uh, in about three months, you can really hear about a 50% positive change where they're much more understandable. And that is if they're coming in with already a fairly strong accent. But the more advanced the person is, the less accent there is, you will not notice as much of a change because there is less to actually change and it will take you a lot longer to really make improvement if you are at a very advanced level. But that doesn't mean that you can't make improvement. If you know exactly the areas to improve and you can focus specifically on those, you can definitely meet your goals. Yeah, I can use myself as an example. So I, you know, if you hear me, um, maybe 11, uh, more than uh, 15 years ago, uh, I have a very strong accent and it's harder to understand me. Today, uh, my, uh, my American friends told me, 
uh, they can understand me easily. And I'm, you know, I'm very brave. I'm doing English podcast and I'm a speaker, right? Public speaker in English and Chinese everywhere. So you see my pronunciation still, I have some accent, but uh, much easier to, un to be understood. But th that was many years ago. I took uh, lessons with a different uh, linguistic or coach um, to help me. I was living in Boston at that time. Then I found a Nico, uh, you know, to, when I am an advanced speaker in, in Nico's words, uh, I found Nico to help me on some specific things. There are <laughs> some things that I just, you know, people continue, uh, they are confused when I say it. And uh, the way, the intonation, the tones, uh, and my kids, they are teenagers, they say, mom, your English is uh, so choppy. <laughs> so that's what I want to get helped on. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention too is people a lot of times are, mm, they're perfectionists. They want to be absolutely perfect. They want to sound like a native and well, I guess the question is why? As long as your English is very understandable, easily understandable by all, that is the main goal. You want good communication with everybody. I don't know that it's really worth your time to try to perfect things unless you are maybe an actor or you know playing a part in a movie and you want to sound the part of American. But truthfully, an accent is um, you know nothing to be ashamed of at all. It's you know it's part of who you are. It's part of your culture. It's, it's part of your background. And um, most of us that have learned a second language all have an accent in that language. You know, second, third, fourth, whatever language. Um, it's it's not easy to to really change that completely. And so it's really not the best goal to say I want to sound perfect. I want to sound exactly like an American. Um, you might want to fine tune like things that are truly errors. Like if you, you know, you're missing plural S endings or, you know, you're not putting your, your past tense markers on that's distracting to the native speaker and makes your English not look so, um, you, you know, so sophisticated. Those are things that you want to work on to, to make sure that you sound intelligent and sophisticated, but, you know, having a slight accent, you know, it, it can be charming. It's, you know, it's definitely, you know, something that makes you interesting. Uh, Nicole, there's a question. Do you provide coaching sessions? The um, short answer is yes, because I'm taking <laughs> Nicole's one-on-one -on -one coaching. Yeah, but yeah. Nicole has also group coaching. Yeah, go ahead, um, Nicole. Hi. Yes, yes, yes. I do, um, I do private coaching, um, group classes, online courses, different things as well. So um, you can connect with me afterwards and, and we can um, you know, talk more, more privately about that as well. Yeah, here's another question. Like Joanne comes first. Yeah, Joanne, you can go ahead. Yeah, so I have a quick question for, uh, for Michelle and uh, Nico. Thank you for your uh, presentation tonight. So my question is uh, uh, regarding um, uh, like a, a call like a re uh, related to the technical technical uh, uh, call, like a conference call. So, uh, so if, uh, for example, if uh, it's, uh, it's really important for the company and the work uh, is a relation to another company, for example, we're working for uh, a, a business, like for a product, for example. So um, in the meeting, so uh, other side, uh, for example, if the group member for the, our company, the English is not good enough to uh, catch up, catch all the uh, points from other side. And, and if you, uh, you're trying to answer the, the questions, but sometimes you cannot catch. For example, if it's a virtual meeting, right? So sometimes there's a background, background noise. Also sometimes, uh, maybe the, uh, the the internet connection is not, not good enough mm. to, and, and the noise in the background, and also uh, the second, um, I mean the uh, I mean not native uh, speaker, and all the all these factors go into the same same time and affected your 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 performance. But at the same at the same times you have the pressure from your own company because. If you say something wrong, maybe, maybe 
for example, you you want to do some the product, and 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 maybe if if you if maybe have some like uh, maybe some some side effect, maybe for example the biting something or uh, that kind of thing. So if you you cannot catch, and and the first first point you cannot catch. And then the second point you miss again, and then a, a lot of thing together. How do you handle that thing? And you just interrupt them, and then one by one, each point say, "Oh, I do, I didn't get that point. Can you explain? <laughs> Can you see that again?" And and that that thing happens. How do you handle that thing? Mm -hmm. Let me start first, because uh, I coach people on their career and on leadership on a lot of things related to their work. Um, it's very it's very often that we when we hear people say especially when they say a lot of things, we miss some stuff, right? Or when they ask questions, they, they said a lot, then, you know, what was their question? Uh, the stuff may, you know, just mix up. So one of the um, easy way to do is you ask a clarify question first. You can tell them, well, um, this is uh, my understanding. Let me, let me validate, let me verify if I understand you correctly. Uh, this is what I heard. And I'm, I'm not very clear on this part. Uh, can you just clarify what, what that is or what you want to ask? Or you can say, okay, this is my understanding of your question. Uh, so you say w what you understand based on whatever the pieces you get. And is that correct? Uh, or you can say, correct me if I missed something, right? This is what I heard. So use this way, you show that you are respecting others, you are listening. Second is you show them well, what are the things you get, right? You, you understand. And what are the things that you don't, or maybe you, know, you, you kind of miss out. Uh, you, right. you probably don't know what you miss out, but when you kind of summarize the things that you heard, your understanding, the other person can yeah. point out, oh, oh, oh there's a one more important thing I just mentioned. They will explain it again. So that's so, just a, one of the way you can use, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes, so um, all the all other people, for example, your group members, they they have like uh, they speak better uh, English, uh, like they are native, or maybe this even the second language they speak much better than you. You are the weakest one in the group. So then, uh, then. But the thing is that only you didn't get the point, and then nobody else care about <laughs> that thing, and then, then just pass by, and all the all the points pass by, and the you, for example, if you for ex at that time the the the, the noise, and the, the 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 microphone performance not very good, the background noise, and only affect you the mark, uh, most effect is for you, but not other people. So they don't care about that. They just pass by, pass by, mm -hmm. and then maybe maybe the at that that time you have to think, oh, do I need to like to, to interrupt or since other people don't care about that thing, <laughs> so they they all get their point already. So if you just uh, you say, oh, I didn't get that thing, just yeah, the, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, for that situation, you probably sh um, you know if that happens or. or a lot in the meeting, you probably shouldn't interrupt every time because right. then you are slowing right. down everybody. Um, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, one of the things you can do is you, you, know, you, you, you try your best to follow along and you jot down the things that you are not clear, then you follow up uh, privately with the yeah, people who talk about that. Or yeah. from email maybe or from other. Right, um, yeah, right. Yeah. But on the other side, uh, you know, because I've been in the U.S. for over 20 years, uh, I tried very hard to learn English and practice my English. Uh, mm -hmm. So everybody, if you want to perform well in this country, uh, your English is a very basic skill for you to improve so that you would be able to uh, show up with more competency. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Everything together so English is the, the first thing you need to yeah, people have to have to make up that, that thing. Yeah right. I highly I highly suggest you 
uh, learn English, practice your English, speak more, and find a coach, find the people, attend some classes. I did that, right? I did that, of, uh, I think, of 15, 16 years ago. Uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I did that. Then I'm doing it again today, right? These, these days. Uh, uh, so, yeah, just to... Yeah, so the f funny thing is that when that thing happens, some people... Um, Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's it's time. <laughs> yeah, due to yeah, time. Sorry, uh, sorry yeah, to interrupt. So like, much. yeah, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Like, the, uh, due to the time, it's late now, so we can allow the last question. So, like, I saw a last question from Xiao. Could I you see, provide there's, us? There's two in here that I was taking a look at. Um, um, Michelle, do you see the one from from Xiao? I'm uh, not yes. quite sure that I understand the question. You maybe will address that. Um, I could address the one from Helen up here. Is it possible to get rid of your accent if you are after 60? Um, well, if you start learning English after 60, it would be very highly unlikely. Generally, it's thought if you begin studying a new language after, after adolescence, after about 12 years old, it's generally thought that you will speak with an accent. Um, that's, it's not impossible to get rid of it, but it's unlikely to get rid of it if you begin learning that language after the age of 12. So obviously, kind of the later you begin learning, the more likely that you are going to retain more characteristics of your first language. And um, your, your brain is not in tuned to hearing new sounds in new patterns, and we transfer the patterns from our original language over. And there's, there's a lot of um, uh, like neuroscience involved in where, where uh, language is stored in the brain, in the first language is here, and the second language is here. And, but there are definitely techniques for improving a lot. Uh, one is using music and song. Definitely you want to sing and use melody type things to activate more parts of your brain, not just the area that stores your first language, which is probably very firmly set at this point. And so you wanna be activating other parts. And again, going back to music and song, that seems to really be helpful in improving accents in, you know, in everybody. And especially as we're getting older, we're not hearing those sounds in our new languages that we're learning. Okay, Michelle, did you have something to, to touch on this one? Could you provide a few tips for taking meeting notes and sending meeting summary? I'm very concerned about the time. I want to ask yeah. our meeting host, because yeah, yeah. um, we can do this in our future sessions. Uh, I do have a lot of tips for these kind of things. Yeah, people can like, uh, things like the on screen, you can see the email of the Nicole and the Michelle, you can just contact them in private or, and at the same time, I think like tonight's video will be recorded on our SEC YouTube channel. So I also will share the screen on our YouTube channel. So you can see like the, the, our YouTube channel is Seattle Entrepreneurship Club. So you will not miss the latest video from us. And also like we have the WeChat official account. And yes. And uh, thanks everyone for joining t tonight's uh, speech and uh, thanks Nico and Michelle for sharing so helpful advice and also like guidelines on how to speak up. And I did find like, yes, uh, Americans speak, uh, smile a lot. Yeah, <laughs> smile. yeah everyone, yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you, thanks, thank, thank you for, for helping thank out and, and thanks for everybody for joining us. Um, please connect and send us an email if you are not on WeChat or you can connect with us through LinkedIn, Facebook, that sort of thing as well. Uh, right? Thanks everyone. Have a good All night. All right. Yeah. See you next Thank time. You. Good night. Mm. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye-bye.